Hello, doing a, uh, a big cutting tool video on the newer washboard. Um, I'll be bequeathing this to a buddy and it was a good opportunity to give it a touch up. And a lot of people have seem to have questions about how to do bigger um, cutting tools with uh, common sized uh, sharpening blocks, stones, things of that nature. You just work it in overlapping sections. Um, if you're out in the field, obviously it's a little bit different, but if you're somewhere where you have a bench, uh, access to a flat surface, you might as well just use a regular bench stone. Um, and it's also really good exercise for identifying flaws in your own technique on smaller knives because it just scales everything up. So if you can keep track of what's going on here in detail, um, it will improve your hand sharpening on smaller tools in my opinion. So I'm just going to get started, right, jump right in. This is 120 grit sandpaper. It should make short work of this steel. It is pretty mild. Um, 1055 carbon steel. I don't know what the hardness is, but it's not very high. This particular machete was last done with a file using a, a draw stroke, so it's pretty easy to see where I'm going here. In fact, I can already feel a burr on this. And if you're not wobbling around too much, it's amazing how quickly you can sharpen a tool this size using no special means. I'm just going to run my thumb up from the spine towards the edge, feel for it. It's pretty good, rub it off. Stuff has a big belly like this, you're gonna have to elevate it. And also have to change your approach unless you want the uh, no, unless you're a stickler. If I just keep working it like this, the grind path is gonna be almost straight into the edge or dead parallel. And that can sometimes make a, a weak edge at this grit or at a, you know, until you get into really fine um, polishing abrasives, which I may or may not even do with this guy. You can see a little bit of the washboard pattern under here. This is a, a C-weight paper. You really can't feel it for the most part, a tiny bit. But when you're dealing with abrasives that are this uh, pronounced, this large, they provide plenty of feedback anyway. I can feel I've got a burr along the whole edge. I don't care if I get the whole thing, I just want to knock most of it off so when I go to a finer abrasive I'm not just kicking a big burr around.
I need a little more of a shim. Jumping from 120 to 320. Let's see if this. If I want to have it as tight as possible, go back and redo the first one. And that tends to take just about all the slack out. So right back to it. Now with the 320, I'm starting to see those tips a little more. I can feel them a little more. Um, generally speaking, I claim 320 is about the break point where you can start to get some good tactile feedback. And it begins to affect the abrasive a little bit at this point. And if we're doing a back and forth on dry um, sandpaper, I'm not generating very much in the way of dust here. Just swarf. That's working into the paper. I'm going to have to stop and eliminate some of that in a second here. It is a little surreal to be working on a knife this big on a smaller stone, but it translates so well. When you when you move to a smaller cutting tool, it is great practice. <laughs> Usually I intentionally convex my machetes, and, and maybe I will a little bit at the 600 grit. Um, for this guy, just for the heck of it, I'm going to keep it pretty flat. Still feel that burr everywhere but at the tip. And a little bit right there. And this is exactly how you can do your smaller knives as well. Sort of focus on the areas that need to work and and don't overwork the areas that don't. You'll do a lot less a lot less effort involved. Again, I'm not worried about getting every last bit of the burr. I just want to uh, eliminate most of it. This may or may not need an additional bit of shim, probably not. Let's see. Going from 320 to 600 now. It's a little got some creases on the top. Go back and make it as tight as I possibly can. Now you can pretty much hear 
the uh, the washboard teeth kicking in. I can feel the vibration very easily, even through a tool this large. No problem. You know, and even at 600 grit, this with a tool this large, I'm raising a burr very quickly. Putting a pretty good polish on this guy. It's just not very hard steel, so it responds very well to hand sharpening. All kinds of improvised means. Now, because it is sandpaper and it does have that tiny bit of gov, and the, uh, the abrasive has a little bit of mobility, burr formation tends to be pretty mild, and you can usually get away with a few back honing passes just like you could on a water stone without raising a, a fresh burr. Normally this is more than enough, I think, of an edge um, for a machete. I will probably give it the, the full Monty. This is really light catalog paper, 600 grit uh, across the grain. But since I'm going to bequeath this to a friend, that extra little bit of TLC here. Now with just plain paper I undoubtedly am going to have to add a little bit of extra shim stock. Try to get all the wrinkles out that I can here. Got a little few wrinkles. I could uh, go over it a little bit more. I also got a piece of junk under the paper. Now I have to do something about it. Is uneven. One of the nice things about this new mounting setup is if you do have a high or low spot on your table and they're wedged in pretty good, you can just kind of fudge the, the low end. And normally, I don't ever have to do anything beyond this. If you stay on the washboard, on this, especially on this milder steel, it doesn't have any problem keeping them sharp and reasonably flat. In fact, normally I um, convex all my machetes. I would have two or three sheets of paper under this thing under normal conditions. But with a big tool like this, it's difficult freehand to keep the bevel perfectly flat anyway, especially going around the bevel, the belly. So. Might as well keep the materials as flat as possible. Now a couple of real light passes, same angle. I can 
out my uh, my brake angle a little bit to be a little more lateral or linear rather. Just the weight of the tool now. And again, normally lavishing. A a working tool like this with this much attention is um, kind of a pointless, but when it's a gift, you might as well do it right. And I'll send it with a note saying, hey, be very careful on your follow-through. All right, well, thanks for watching. That's uh, big tool sharpening um, on a washboard. You can use the exact same technique on any bench stone. In fact, you can get this right down to a, you know, like a six-inch stone. Um, it goes a little quicker or a little slower and you have to stop to clean it off more. Um, that's where like a water stone or something comes in handy, but the sandpaper is real forgiving for that too because you can just clean it off. So it's a good medium for this kind of work. All right, thanks for watching.